this Hall of Fame game picks and NFL DFS Week One edition of the Sports Gambling Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet a hundred dollars at WinBet and get a hundred dollar free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash WinBet. That's sportsgamblingpodcast dot com slash W Y N N B E T to claim your free bet today. We're also brought to you by IP Vanish. IP Vanish is the official VPN of SGPN, and they're offering 70% off if you go to IPVanish.com slash SGP. That's IPVanish.com slash SGP. And make sure to check out our new Discord server, the perfect place to interact and sweat pets with the entire SGPN crew. Just go to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. Hey, this is Bill Romanowski. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening? Kramer dog live ammunition. Play the sound when there's, there's live ammo going off at the range. <laughs> We're making NFL picks. Yes, sir. We're making DFS picks <laughs> real ones too. Yes. Real ones. We are here. We are talking. NFL, the NFL kicks off tomorrow, and uh, what a day it is to be alive! Of course, uh, call into our uh, pregame show, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord, if you want to call in. We're going to be live, taking your calls, talking about NFL futures, maybe some Hall of Fame game uh, prop bets as well. Whatever you guys want to get into, we will be counting you down to the official 2022 NFL kickoff. Cannot wait. Uh, so jacked up for it. And so we're going to, we're going to talk about that, but also the DFS prices for NFL week one have already dropped. Yeah. I've been firing off, you know, $5, mil- $5 million maker, million maker <laughs> lineups go. left and right. Yes, sir. So we're going to give you a uh, early look at one of those. Don't worry. We also do a DFS episode uh, on our Wait. normally scheduled program. We're just going to take well. an early look. We're not yes. actually going to give out a lineup. <laughs> it's only leans, Ryan. Only lanes. How ma- There's so many of those out there. There are so many leaners out there, but there's only one win bet. That's right. Sports gambling podcast.com slash W Y N N B E T. If you haven't set up your win bet account, you are missing out. Get that set up today. Get that deposit in today. A hundred dollar free bet or a hundred dollar bet gets you a hundred dollar free bet. The win bet casino always open 24 seven, hundred percent deposit bonus up to $1,000 oh reduced juice for baseball grinding out baseball. Shout out to the baseball grinders day in day out, putting in the work. And of course, NFL preseason NFL futures win bet is the uh, yeah, win bet presenting sponsor. They help us. You like us. Help out WinBet. Do them a solid. Help keep the content train alive and well. Sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T. Offer subject to change. Terms, conditions at winbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in the state where playthrough WinBet is available. If you or someone you know has a gambling problem, call 1 800 522 4700. All right, Kramer, let's get to it. Let's talk NFL preseason game one hall of fame game. How do we start? I forget. Do we just remind everyone to take the under? Yes. Uh, Is it too late? Has all the EV been squeezed? So right now the, <laughs> cause the, it's been dropping like a, like a brick. I think it opened at like 32 and a half. It's uh right now win has it at 30 and a half. I'm still all over the under. I mean, you go back and you look at these uh, previous hall of fame game scores. It is it is pretty rare for them to uh to break 30 points. Yeah. You know what I mean? 
I mean, I was looking at all the historic numbers. It's funny, like back in the day, like in 1962, it was actually a high scoring game. That's where they play. They, they played preseason games. Yeah, 1964, the Colts beat the Steelers 48 to 17. Could you imagine that? Now it's it's a completely different game. Um, they did. I I thought they didn't play it last year. I I was maybe misremembering. Was it two years ago that the paint the paint mishap paint gate happened? Ryan, you're getting old because that was actually in 2016 where the paint did not dry. Oh, so old. I'm still mad about that. It's six years later. I'm still mad about it. So last year they did play the uh, a Hall of Fame game, 16 to three. Steelers beat the Cowboys, and I'm sure we were on the Steelers because fuck the Cowboys. Yeah. 2020, no uh, game. Broncos Falcons 14 to 10 uh, Bears Ravens. This was a bit of a shootout uh, 17, 16 uh, Cowboy year before Cowboys Cardinals 2018 year before that though, Vikings 14 and three bills or Vikings Steelers 14 to three uh, Giants bills 17 to 13. So, you know, what is that? Um, five and two, four and two. I mean, you just got to play the under. I know it's, it's gross. And if you can get it, if you can, if you can find it, or maybe, maybe some late steam pushes the number up. I, I'd like having that 31 in there uh, because 17, 14 does <laughs> feel like what the number. score could be 30 and a half is there for a reason right now. Yeah. I'm thinking they're going to pick up some squares looking to go, go under right, will, will the public be on the over? Or ha- I don't know. have we, have we shared <laughs> the voice of the, the under gospel enough? I feel like yeah, now that people are on social media, like at tomorrow again, get the bets in now. You probably should have bet it a little bit earlier. Um, also, get in, get in your um, Baltimore Ravens week one preseason bets. John Harbaugh's won twenty in a row. The the Ravens are minus two hundred on the money line. I like that. That's moved already since we've started yeah, talking I think like, about. It. Uh, yeah, I think it opened at like minus one seventy. We did the Ravens preview? I think yesterday. Who knows? It could have been in two thousand sixteen too, though. Uh, and and fuck, I think I think it was minus one seventy five, minus one eighty. So yeah, so get down on Ravens, uh, and really, uh, the under in this game to me is is just a great play. Uh, someone in the chat is throwing out. Eric says, "How how low would you play it? Under twenty one and a half is plus two eighty five. Also, do you think uh, first half high scoring? What what's your lean on that, right? I so." If I'm the Jags, if I'm Doug Peterson, I, I definitely want to pl- get my. I mean, yeah, first, first. I guess you're, you're. No, I would go second half higher score. Really, than first half. I mean, but again, this is the Hall of Fame game. This is more about getting your eyes, your energy, your your heart back <laughs> to watching football. To me, it's an underplay, and maybe I'll fuck around with some showdown slates once we have a little bit more information well, about who might actually play. Uh, and shout out to the fantasy football podcast on SGPN. They're they're breaking down DFS for the Hall of Fame game. So Ryan, if you want some early leans, yeah. I, I think you head over there. I also like. I also have a. I, I'm feeling pretty good about taking the Jags money line. Doug Peterson eight and eight in preseason games. However, that includes him being four and zero oh that first year he was an Eagles head coach. And I think this Jacksonville Jaguars team. I think they need it more than the Raiders. I mean, oh, the, we're the, going that narrative. Yes. The, the Raiders are a playoff team. I think the Jags come in and go, Hey, you know what? Let's get a win. I, I think, I think winning like Jacksonville was such a disaster, right? That I think a win, even if it's a preseason win is something to this team. And when Doug Peterson came in, did, you know, in the, in a similar fashion, obviously not as bad, but chip Kelly kind of you know, poison the culture. Well, that was the Philadelphia Eagles with all those smoothies. And they, yeah. Doug Peterson comes in and goes, you know what? We, let's win some games goes four and oh in his first year as a preseason uh, head coach. Meanwhile, Josh McDaniels two and six in preseason games. Now bill Belichick. Interesting. He's all he's up to 49 and 36, but a lot of those wins came early on in the process. I feel like he's dialed it back a little bit as far as his approach to the preseason. Yeah, I, I mean, again, I, I actually went back to pull up some notes on last year's game just to put myself in the w- right frame of mind. Um, it was nice uh, reliving the Cowboys' loss, but I mean, we have notes like underwhelming Harris debut, first round rookie Najee Harris averages three point one yards <laughs> per carry on seven rushes. Mapletron looked great on a couple out routes. Um, I, I so I, I think. Yeah, my expectation would be if you're the Jags, maybe you're playing your starters a little longer. 
Derek yeah. Derek Carr and, and the and the starters out. I mean, yeah. Do I want Trevor see Lawrence? I think you know. I, I don't know how long they'll play. Travis but at least. Etienne is coming back yeah. from something. Uh, obviously, we won't see Robinson. We got some new receivers. Well, it's, it's a chemistry thing, right? Yeah. I I worry less about uh, Carr and the chemistry with his guys, with the exception of Devontae Adams. But you know, obviously, they have all time chemistry. Yeah. From college, and that's and a different actually, kind of chemistry. Actually, Belichick has been good. Nine and two uh, last three years on preseason games. I, I was misremembering that. So maybe, maybe McDaniel's comes in and and does try. I I think I see I him think not cares. doing. Yeah. I, I see him not caring, and especially the team. Like the team doesn't need it. Like the Jags need this game. I, I dare I say must win for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, I, I think the real thing is you got to look down the depth chart because I, I think a lot of the reason why I think there's more there's more camp battles on this Jacksonville team. There's more questions as to like more, who's going to be spots. the starters, who who is going to get the most. Now McDaniel's is a new head coach, but he he's a new head coach. It's not because the team bottomed out. It was because John they found John Gruden's emails. Yeah. So and, and again, they made it to the playoffs. They have a roster. I, I think they already kind of have in mind who's going to be th- their depth chart feels way more figured out than the Jags. I think there's Jags are you know some guys are fighting for legit starting spots. Is there a guy from either team that you're excited to get in a DFS roster? Is there a guy? Um, Is there a guy in this game? Someone down the depth chart? Someone we maybe will only talk about in the in the preseason? <laughs> Uh, that's interesting. I mean, Zahir White. I I don't know how much they run him, but again, I think there's a real chance we gave him out as a dark horse rookie of the year. Just coming back uh, from injury, so I do wonder how much run he'll get. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, so I know he's missed some practice. Uh, yeah. There's always a running back, right? Like that's the first area. Like which one of these these no names is going to get the bulk of the carry? And then also like which one of these established receivers, Matt Collins, Demarcus Robinson, Keelan Cole. Which one of these dudes who is, you know, I, on some level is a professional wide receiver is going to get the bulk of the the work out there with is it going to be a Nick Mullins game because we like Nick Mullins. Yeah. Is it going to be a Jared Stidham game? We like him a little less. And then Chase Garbers, I know nothing about. So, uh, I certainly think, you know, when I look at Oakland, I just see less I just see less certainty that any of these guys are going to have, you know, Matt Collins, I ball think could, out preseason. Type Matt situation. Collins could dominate a preseason game. That is, that is really typical Matt Collins. I, I would not be shocked actually. And, and to your point, I think he, him, and then uh Zamir white, if it, it, depending if he's good injury wise, I think he is interesting. I worry that white's too touted. He's too highly important to their, their team that he's going to get all. I feel like the Hall of Fame game. This is a game where a guy who's not, you know, a guy who's going to be playing in the XFL or the USFL or maybe MLFB, uh, rest in peace. I, I just, I don't know if the guy that you're playing, the running back you're targeting, isn't a guy that's going to make the roster. All right, but when I flip to the other side, Sean, I see Trevor Lawrence. Shout out, and you know what else I see? I see a guy who's done some work in the preseason before. I see a guy who's done some work in the USFL before. Kyle Sloter. On the roster oh, in Jacksonville, oh, yeah. hello, CJ Beathard. These are Bethard, as uh, some Jake call him. Luton. I mean, these are these are a who's who one? of who gives a shit. But they are Slaughter. they are gonna carry them. Slaughter. Slaughter. I mean, Slaughter. Slaughter is coming off a season like he's gonna be. <laughs> he's warmed up. You could make a case. Slaughter is gonna be one of the more polished guys out there. He just finished playing an entire season. I love this Jags play. I'm on the Jags. I'm on the under 30 and a half. I think it's fun to parlay them. Um, and in 2017, he was 31 for 43 for 413 yards and three touchdowns in the preseason. That's pretty good. His his preseason numbers have been insane. He is a preseason god. So all over uh, Kyle Sloter. Any chance we have a Kyle Sloter revenge spot here? Who was on the Raiders roster for a bit in 2021? <laughs> You know, because yeah, three, three or four weeks. Slaughter's one of those guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, he, he just he, he manufactures motivation. Just it looks in the mirror and says, "Who's doubting me? Who doesn't believe in Kyle Slaughter?" How, how many of these other guys that are going to be playing in the Hall of Fame game just finished the season where they uh, threw 291 times, completed 168 for 1,800 yards and nine touchdowns? Ignore the 11 interceptions. I don't give a shit. And he also even ran one in. Come on. Slaughter, oh, I, Slaughter, right, Slaughter, Slaughter has some dog in him. Uh, I I think he I think he carries this team. 
And really, it's gonna come down to those those guys deep on the depth chart that are gonna end up winning this game. So, hundred percent on the Jacksonville Jaguars, hundred percent on the under. Feel free to parlay those. The dog and under. Dog. What, what? What? That's the most intriguing thing to me. The the complete shift to the Raiders being. I'm not taking the two and a half points. I'm. I'm what do you mean you're I'm, not taking the two and a half points? I'm. L- I'm going money, money line. line. Yeah, yeah. That's the. Yeah, of course, it's preseason. You don't take points in the preseason. <laughs> that's ridiculous. Well, Ryan, you know you're Blindly supposed, you're supposed to lay the two and a half, and or no, no wait, it's the other way around, right? No, yeah, take, no, you the, take two the two and, and a half, half, lay the three and a half. I, uh, I mean, that's a that's more of a market signal analysis thing, Sean. <laughs> uh, look, I, I, for the highbrow crowd out there, yeah, I think this is purely a, you know, we broke it down, right? Why, why take the Raiders? I don't see any reason why. I, I don't know enough about the guys down the roster, but this will be bad. This will be won by guys who aren't on the NFL roster. Come, but that, which is why I love Slaughter. That's a, that's a fun play. I maybe I will have. I was talking shit on the showdown lineups for the Hall of Fame game, but then then I realized what? I'm why gonna would have you showdown. not have one? You know, I'm a, I'm not a showdown guy. It's like totals. <laughs> Showdowns are they're kind of annoying for DFS. Who, are, but but on the on the flip side, because we didn't yeah. look at the the Jacksonville lineup real quick. Is there anyone on the Jacksonville lineup that stands out to you that could see some work in the preseason? Uh, we've heard names like uh, Raquel Armstead before. A lot of running backs who I'm not super familiar with, but I saw Snoop Connor, who's a guy yeah, who got drafted. He was one that I I kind of tagged. But again, I worry is perhaps he too uh, important to the future of this team? Dan Arnold sighting. Could we see him in the preseason running some tight end routes? I I don't know. I. I certainly think there's way more. You nailed it. There's way more competition on this Jags team. So, no, I mean Dan Arnold. He's a player's coach. Is he? You Dan, know, Dan Arnold. Well, yeah, that's why he's not gonna. He's not gonna make the veterans go after. It, but there's, you know, like to Dan Arnold's point, I think he he <laughs> could. To Dan Arnold, I think he could compete with uh, Evan Ingram for that starting job. So yeah, again, I, maybe too good for the preseason then. Yeah, and it's weird because it's not only the preseason, but it's like the. Preseason of preseason game, so they're really going to play it tight to the vest. But again, I love Kyle Sloter. A great call on that, Ryan. So all, all right. over. Surprised Slaughter. you weren't on that already. No, yeah, you know. Well, that's why we do the show. <laughs> <laughs> what about? Um, I feel like I've heard Jamal Agnew's name. What do we? What's our take on him? I don't know. We've heard we, his name's been popping around for a while. Yeah. Dynamic. I feel like it's the you throw him in the category of like the Tavon Austin. Yeah. Gadget players that always excite people in the preseason because they he's look a return exciting. guy too. That's why his name's familiar. All right, so yeah, maybe Jamal Agnew with the Slaughter stack. If you're looking to go showdown, I, I I'll tweet out some showdown lineups tomorrow. I'm sure yeah. I'll have some time. And we'll post in the Discord. And again, get in the Discord tomorrow, 4:30 Pacific. Oh, I'm actually sorry. Late breaking news: Luton, Luton apparently is the uh, is going to be the leader to get most of the reps. So. All right, so then stack Slaughter with Luton. For your showdown lineup, get that started. But again, Jags, I like. I Jags think the, the angle. Under. I think the angle on the Jags is legit. Like the under, always going to be on under, especially Week One NFL preseason. I feel like we got to do. We do have to caution the audience. Doug Peterson does does have some real estate in the heart area over there. So perhaps you you might be a little higher on on Doug Peterson than most. Well, again, I I like the angle of him going four and zero that first Eagles year, and I and I feel like this is a similar scenario. For again, him. yeah, I, I know. I, I'm just pointing out to the audience that there might be some bias. I do like Doug P. Not gonna lie. How could you? How could you hate Doug Peterson? Vis- Visor. The man who called. Pfizer's the first thing that comes to mind. The man who called the Philly special. Uh, yeah. Nick Foles called the Philly special. Well, we, right. we saw the tape. But he 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 greenlit it, right? He did enable his players to be great. I like that. All right, uh, let's move over to the DFS Week One lineups, uh, early predictions. Before we get to that, shout out to Odds Trader. That's right. What does Odds Trader tell you? It's your one-stop shop for sports gambling. You can get the best prices, best promos, all the best offers, all conveniently in one place. Plus, injury reports, uh, projected game day weather, um, bet tracker. They really Odds Trader. I mean, shout out to them. I I was not familiar with them before they started running the ad and. Uh, I'm certainly glad I got signed up. Uh, OddsTrader.com slash Blue Wire, so they know we sent you. OddsTrader.com slash Blue Wire. But yeah, again, just uh, tons of great info, um, analytics, a little bit of everything over there. And again, the best sportsbook promos in the biz. Get you set up over there. OddsTrader.com slash Blue Wire. OddsTrader, the number one site for all your game day bets. And we're also brought to you by IP Vanish. That's right. Make your security problems 
disappear with IP Vanish. She can be virtually invisible online. You know, if you just fire up incognito mode, not actually invisible. Uh, trust me, you don't want to learn the hard way. Uh, your browsing history, passwords, all that, you're putting it out there in the world. That stuff can get hacked. You need to lock it up. You need to encrypt it. IP Vanish makes that easy and great to use on a uh, Fire Stick. We use uh, IP Vanish here for God's Eye uh, on the Amazon Fire Stick. You can use unlimited devices, doesn't slow you down streaming wise. Highly, highly recommend ipvanish.com slash SGP and use that promo code SGP. Claim your 70% off ipvanish.com slash SGP. Kramer, what do we got here? Uh, would you, so obviously, so we, we've discussed this a little bit, but I think both of us are planning to play lineups with every quarterback. Uh, yeah. I figured for this lineup, I would, I would take a lineup that I plan on having multiples of and perhaps a little chalky, but I, I were, I wonder if him being at the top of the board will uh, have folks going in different directions. And that's Patrick Mahomes. He is on the road. That's fine. But this is, you could argue this is going to be the lowest his stock will be mm. because people have uncertainty about what this offense will look like. Okay. Uh, it also kind of helps me tidy up some easy correlation to the tight end. It helps me, um, you know, obviously I went and looked at the totals. This is one of the highest totals on the board. And it gives me an opportunity to, to, to fade Cliff Kingsbury. You know, for a second I had Kyler in there, but I, I just couldn't <laughs> do it. First DFS lineup given out in 2022. Couldn't be Kyler, although he is playing for money now, a lot of money. But yeah, Patrick Mahomes is seventy seven hundred, and again, boy, do I love the uh, one way or another. I like the Cardinals to put up some points early in the season. They do it every year, uh, and boy, do I love the idea of Patrick Mahomes coming out with a chip on his shoulder because someone has been saying that Tua is on his same level. <laughs> so, so that was you don't really think funny. he has to settle this. You don't think there's a chance we have a little Patrick Mahomes fu mode. He wants to show the world too that he's more than just a guy who had Mike Kafka by his side. Who's now with the New York Football Giants? <laughs> he wants to prove to the world that cash he's better the than Tua. Un- cash the under. Didn't uh, Patrick even, Mahomes. Did, well, you know, I understand on the team previews, crowbar and the Giants into every episode, but really super impressive to do it uh, yeah, when called, we're talking <laughs> preseason week one, and not even a Giants player. I'm a, I'm a professional. You right. don't even see it coming. I can just keep no, it. That really took me. Uh, that took me by surprise. Former Eagle quarterback. Yeah, Mike Kafka. Not a good quarterback. Um, <laughs> you mentioned Likes NFTs though. Yeah, that's, that's cool. cool. You mentioned chip on your shoulder, All right. I mean, break out the guacamole because this man has a giant chip on his shoulder. Nice. A Rod himself, oh. Aaron Rodgers, seven thousand dollars week one at the Minnesota Vikings and Minnesota Vikings defense, which will be <laughs> coached up without Mike Zimmer mm-hmm. for the first time in mm-hmm. a long time. And we we spent a decent amount of that episode talking about how the secondary is very fragile, soft, very fragile. Some young guys and some old guys, and that's not always the best formula. Aaron Rodgers, last time he started uh, the season in Minnesota, twenty twenty, uh, opening day against the Vikings, three hundred sixty four yards, four touchdowns. I think is he's, that good? Yeah, I think he's going to come in throwing. It's a dome. He does have a chip on his shoulder. He seems out. Uh, he seems, you know, wanting to show that he's more than just Devonte Adams. Their season ended horribly with no, uh, what they had one offensive touchdown at home. This is the ultimate get right spot against the division opponent with a soft secondary all in on uh, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. I mean, at some point go winning 13 games in the regular season has to turn into more. And so if that's, and again, we like John wick sequel. Like it's okay to have a sequel. So when he showed up uh, pointing out to the world that he was, he was going full Nicholas cage, I maybe a good thing. He's going to have some shitty ones though. If he's be, he's going full Nicholas cage, he's going to have a couple shitty well, games. Yeah, so you got to worry about that. every, every once in a while. I mean, we remember last year at the saints where they play that yeah. game in Florida and weird. they lost 38 to three, like every once in a while, Aaron Rodgers lays a complete dud. Um, Should have seen cage. You mean? Well, Nick Cage as well. I mean, most of his stuff is just perfect, but <laughs> every once in a while, Nick Cage puts right. out something where you're like, you know, not really what we're looking it's for. It's not gone uh, in sixty seconds every time. <laughs> Nick Cage. So, um, yeah, I, I, one hundred percent in All on right. Aaron Rodgers. Hand me the Cohen. baton because I'll stay on the Packers. Give me Aaron Jones. Yeah, I, I super like, high on him. I asked him, you, I was like, should I stack with Aaron Jones and get cute? I didn't. Maybe I still got cute, but I didn't. I didn't actually go Aaron Jones. But make the case, and I think it's pretty easy one to make. I just 
I think you're gonna. I mean, again, I think this could be a high-scoring game. We we like Minnesota's ability to push back on offense. Uh, I think you know this could be. It's in a dome. Could be quietly one of the high. Wouldn't be surprised if this was the highest-scoring game of week one. And Aaron Jones, I, you know, I think we've nailed it all preseason, all offseason. But he's a dude that's going to be involved in the passing game. I think they want AJ Dillon to have a couple more carries, and I think that's going to result. And exciting things like Aaron Jones uh, lining up out wide. What well, AJ Dillon and Aaron Jones were in the backfield at the same time, Sean. Woo! If I was a Packers fan, I'd be getting excited. I think Aaron Jones again. I think he's in the in the class of running back who could see a hundred targets this year. And so at sixty seven hundred, you look at the running back tiers. You know, there's ten guys above him. I think maybe it's eight. Uh, but regardless, it's 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 enough to where, you know, if I'm looking at Swift and I'm looking at Aaron Jones, that's a no brainer to me. If I'm looking at Connor and I'm looking at Aaron Jones, that's a no brainer to me. So uh, the opportunity will be there. I think this is, again, you're, you're kind of playing the unknown here. You don't know what it's going to look like. So I think you're, we're going to be buying into something that's not going to be this cheap all year. Aaron Jones, 6,700. Yeah. Uh, great opportunity for Aaron Jones early on in the season. I went James Connor. That's right. James Connor, who Ryan, you are not a fan of, but Hey, He's only seven thousand dollars at home against the Chiefs. You highlighted that game as potentially having high scoring, um, and I I agree. You you look at the San Francisco 49ers game where Chase Edmonds had one carry for three yards, got injured. James Conner takes the the bulk of the workload. Twenty one attempts, ninety six yards, two touchdowns rushing, five catches, five uh, five targets, five catches, yeah. seventy seven yards, one touchdown receiving. Now Kyler. Coming into the season, what am I projecting, Kyler? <sighs> Two things Kyler's gonna do: not run as much because he's soft, yep. and look to check down to running backs because mm. he doesn't want to get hit. He's a he's a pretty boy. He wants to sit at home. He he, he can't injure his Call of Duty. Wow. Uh, and yeah. have you seen all the Call of Duty stats where, as soon as new Call of Duty maps come out, his like numbers go down. I think again. I think he is prime for a quarterback. Shout out to the dude who's done the analysis yes. on that. By the way, it's right up there with James Harden in the strip clubs, um, <laughs> or, or LeBron in the tacos. Yeah, Taco Tuesday. I think uh, five catch. I, I think he's going to be involved in the passing game, especially with no DeAndre Hopkins. I think Zach Ertz gets involved, and James Conner see a nice workload in the passing game as well. He trusts James Conner, and I like that matchup against the Kansas City linebackers. All right. I don't hate. I mean, I, I I see the point. I just, yeah, I'm I'm blind. I like Connor too. I just I'm. I'm it's a Kingsbury factor, maybe. All right, uh, my second running back. Again, I'm just leaning into dudes I've been on all off, all off season. Um, I know this is a per perhaps uh, controversial, but J.K. Dobbins against the Jets, a team that it was horrible against the run. I don't think they're going to be much better. Fifty six hundred. Baltimore is going to come out and intentfully run the ball. Uh, again, I think that JK, we're going to see JK Dobbins price rise. Once we see what this offense looks like, once we see that he's getting 15 plus carries and putting the ball in the end zone, you know, sure. You can argue with me that his, his ca pass catching uh, floor might be lower, but again, some unknown here. I know that it's fun to say uh, things like Tyler Beatty is on the roster. He could be a fun pass catching guy. Uh, I'm blanking on his, uh, on who was the, <laughs> who's the other pass catching guy on the Raiders or on, on the Ravens, uh, Sean, I'm blanking on that's coming back off injury trivia question. I'm pulling up the, the roster right back. now. Uh, mother fuck. They have so many run justice Hill. Oh yeah. On yeah, his yeah. way back as well. But I, I think there's a version of this for JK Dobbins is, is being worked a lot. And so week one, uh, 15 to 20 carries. That's going to be a, a nice, a nice payout for a guy who's only 5,600. Again, they're the Ravens guys. Don't forget. They're going to run the ball a ton. <laughs> I don't think it'll be popular either. Even though the, like they, they're one of the bigger favorites in week one. All right. Uh, my second running back, probably going to be chalky, but I Christian McCaffrey mm, okay. again, I, I do think he will get injured at some point, but that's why you're looking to play him week one in DFS. He's $8,500 at home. Panthers again. Baker's probably going to be starting. Revenge on his mind. Um, I I think they're going to give Baker some easy. Whether it's Baker or Sam Darnold, you're going to want to give them some easy throws. And also, I think Christian McCaffrey might actually have a pretty good day running the ball because the back of that Cleveland secondary is good. They have good cornerbacks. I think if you're drawing up a game plan against the against the Browns, you're looking to run the ball, pound the rock, and 
you know, get the linebackers open in space. So I think McCaffrey is prime for a great game. Should $8, be five hundred dollars. Should be the strength of that line too. Not that they're good, but they'll probably be better running block, run blocking unit than pass blocking unit. So, and I think the Browns. That's absolutely how you how you have to attack him. I mean, he's a ten thousand dollar player when he's healthy. Yeah, and, he's and doing he should be a hundred percent superpower things. All right, my first receiver. Who do you got? All right, so I'm gonna go a little out of order price wise because we're gonna get the stack out of the way. Okay, uh, Valdez Scantling, forty seven hundred. We've heard the buzz. In camp, I know a lot of people will be on Sky Moore in this spot. I think a decent amount of people will be on Juju. Yep, uh, we're playing to win a million. Who's gonna run the high A dot routes? That's MVS, baby. It's not Juju, that's for sure. And I don't think it's gonna be Sky Moore. So uh, forty-seven hundred is a cheap price for what could be the guy who's going to take the top off the defense for the. For Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs. So uh, again, I, I don't know if we're going to be pulling off stacks with Mahomes for this cheap because we don't know who the wide receiver is going to be. Uh, and uh, again, and then the second a- aspect of this is I also like Arizona's defense's ability to give up some big plays from time to time. So forty seven hundred stack number one with Mahomes. Give me MVS. I actually have a Juju as my like mini game stack for Arizona Kansas City fifty two hundred dollars. I, I see your case for MVS. My, you know, kind of going for the Millie wild card player is is who I'm gonna stack with Green Bay. We'll get to that in a second. But I, I think Juju again could see like, you know, nine targets. I think he could get a ton of easy PPR stuff Maybe. in that West Coast offense. I think it's uh, to your point, I think uh MVS has the chance to break out as far as like some big play stuff, but as far as a guy who has a chance to get um, more dub- of a cash play for me, Juju double digit targets. I think Juju could be a PPR machine. And for that reason, $5,200 against his cards defense. Uh, give me Juju. I did consider doing a, and I will have a Juju MVS uh, Ertz bring back at some point, but this is not that lineup. All right. Uh, I'll, I'll continue with my bring back. And I, I actually zagged on myself because <laughs> Ertz is the obvious choice. But then I'm thinking, who the fuck is going to play Hollywood? A disgusting act. This is interesting. Okay. We got the college narrative. We got the BFF narrative. And Sean, we're trying to win a million. Yeah. Hollywood's going to be running down the field. And again, this Chiefs defense, uh, they don't always start fast. And they they never uh, they never are going to be a top team against the pass when they're when their quarterback and their offense is so good and they're putting up points. So again, expected shootout. I think there's no way unless he's hurt that Hollywood Brown isn't involved here. And you know, yeah, they brought him in. You would when, think when they he's would dropping the ball, stuff. when he's dropping 60 yard touchdown passes, I'll be out on him for the rest of the season, but it's a new year week one week one. And I, I, this was a, I I'm penciling this in as a contrarian play. I think Ertz will be quite chalky. Yeah, you're you're getting into that like double zag territory where everyone seems super high on him. I mean, the, I guess I'll be interested to see where his ownership lands because it did seem, if you look at ADP, Hollywood Brown is pretty high right now. You think so? So yeah. you think he's going to get played? I think so, All but right. we'll see. I think you're you're you're. We live in a world where it's almost like everyone's saying Ertz not is to so play cheap. Him. I guess that's that that my where I settled on is that Ertz is Ertz is so. Will the cumulative ownership of Hollywood Brown and Kelsey be less than? Ertz and Juju. Probably not. Yeah. Uh my my bring back for the Packers Vikings, give me Justin Jefferson, seventy eight hundred dollars. I mean, again, a uh, bit of a chalky play here, but he has a chance pretty easily to be the number one fantasy football receiver ever. He seems super fired up. Um, you know, the the offense seems to g- gonna be throwing the ball more. Uh, you know, Adam Thielen could be towards the end of his run there. And Justin Jefferson is just a dog. So seventy eight hundred dollars at home against this Packers team, which again I I think could be a shootout type game. Like him a lot there at that price, especially. I'm gonna give you a nugget here because we're friends. Uh, Alexander, I think has played Jefferson pretty well. I know he's had some some good shutdown games on him. So just something to something to think about. But yeah, I mean that's that's where I would probably play too. It's hard to play Thielen. He's old and washed as the, as the kids say. All right. Last receiver. Yep. 
a little bit of a game stack loading here, but we heard the off season notes about how Pittman is just going to let Matt Ryan put it wherever he wants it. Or maybe it was the <laughs> other way around Uh 5,500. I do think that, you know, as high as I am on Houston, they're going to sell out to stop this running game and force Matt Ryan to beat him. So I think I like Michael Pittman's ability to have what you described Juju to me is the Michael Pittman line versus Houston. Everyone's going to be holy shit. Michael Pittman had 15 targets, 10 catches <clears throat> for a hundred, like maybe not the highest value catches, but I do think Houston sells out to stop the pass or stop the run and Jonathan Taylor. And you know, I'm, I'm kind of Pittman's interesting. Mo, Mo Ali Cox is interesting based on what I'm seeing in camp. So went with Pittman 5,500 sets up a nice little mini game stack. Uh, we're noting uh, Justin Jefferson against the Green Bay Packers. Four games, nineteen catches, two hundred seventy-nine yards, two touchdowns. So um, maybe not as gaudy as some of his other stuff, but I, I, to me, it's more about the game flow. I think they could be playing from behind and, and getting some easy stuff there. Sure. Um. Yeah. No, yeah. I don't mind Pittman. Uh, well, I just where is the competition on his team coming from? I understand there's some buzz on uh, Pierce. I understand, you know, like I said, I've seen some sweet, sweet Mo Alley Cox uh, highlights in the preseason, but they, they do seem to be going out of their way. I can't tell if they're just messing around, but Naheem Hines, they keep uh, hyping up uh, Naheem Hines, uh, which is interesting because he's fifty one hundred dollars. So I don't think I love it, but um, he's he's every once in a while I'll have those like two touchdown games, a bunch of easy catches. All right, so for my stack, the first part of my Packers stack. Again, this is the type of player you play if you're trying to win a million dollars. Now, normally, um, you don't want to play a rookie in Aaron Rodgers' no. system, but Romeo Dubs uh, has been lighting it up in camp. He's only three thousand dollars, and again, <laughs> uh, maybe maybe Lazard ends up being his guy. I think it's I think it's you know they got to figure it out a little bit and. Romeo is going to be going up against the second or third cornerback yep. in that Viking system. I All think right. there's going to be a nice opportunity. Again, this is the moonshot, three thousand dollars. He's your Wandell Ram- Robinson play. Is that what you're saying? I was going to go with Tariq Cohen because that's been successful under unlike Wandell Robinson. But is Cohen out of the league? Uh, Do we have to address this fact that the we're now so far removed that Tariq Cohen is no longer? He had in some league. injury issues. I feel for the guy. <laughs> But again, you uh, read everything out of camp that um, yeah, no, he seems ha- it seems like he's doing good things, making tough catches look easy, big play ways. A- Reminds a me of Randall camp. Cobb, honestly. Like, do you remember the when Randall Cobb showed up as a rookie and had that big first week, like eight catches or something like that? Yeah, no, and and we'll see, we'll see. He, I, I wouldn't be shocked if maybe he ends up becoming popular if he has a really good preseason. But right now, Romeo Dubs, uh, three thousand dollars feels great. What do you got for your tight end, Ryan? Holy shit, this was so long ago. But Randall Cobb in his first game, 2011, by the way. That was the first year we were doing the show. Uh, Jesus, it doesn't feel oh like that long ago. God. He had a 108 yard kickoff return. Um, and he had a number of catches, too. I'm not seeing the number. But yeah, I mean, that, I, I do feel like it, it's not like it's never happened before with Aaron Rodgers and a rookie. Yeah. Is, is, is what I'm saying. No, right. that's, yeah. Tight end, Travis Kelsey. 6,600. It's crazy. If you, if you look at um, Kelsey's price relative to the other receivers at that, like he's, he's going for the same price as Terry McLaurin, Mike Williams and Tyree kill AJ Brown, Jalen Waddle. Like if you look at it like that, isn't that insane? He's going to see so many targets. Yeah. I, I, I don't. And I'm trying to think who would actually slow him down on Arizona? I, I think it's a, yeah, it's a, I mean, it's a great spot. I mean, for them. it's chalky. I, I they're, get on, that. they're on the road, but you know, he's getting up there. You know, like the argument against Kelsey is that he's getting older. His efficiency has gone down as far as like playing him at best ball or managed leagues. But to your point, week one, he's going to be super fresh. Um, and, and I don't think any of those like age stuff should hinder him. He's also never had a year with, I mean, when's the last time he played without Tyree kill? Like, you know, like I yeah. get, I get there's other guys that are going to take some of the targets, but when you look at his career, it's, you know, I, I, you can nitpick, I guess that his efficiency has gone down, but this dude has had insane numbers basically since 2016. 
I mean, we're talking about a guy who's been heav- north of 130 targets for the past four years. Uh, just basically, with the exception of 2019, basically averaging 10 touchdowns a year. No, and I mean, now, Kelsey's and, a machine. And Tyree Kill's gone. <laughs> yeah, someone's got to catch some touchdowns. I, I'm I'm hoping it's Juju. I think his yards per target go up this year. Really, I do. I I do think that. I think you're going to see uh, him and MVS used down the field more, and you're going to have Juju and even maybe Sky more a little bit more around the line. I I think I think this Chiefs team is going to look different, and they're still going to be good. So we haven't gotten to their preview yet, but I might be over on them this year. All right, uh, it's you're at tight end. I mean. This is the lock of all locks. Bobby Tunyon, thirty nine hundred dollars. Mm. Again, I'm trying to get all the opportunities I can against this Vikings defense. But you look at Tunyon; some of his his best career games have come when Adams is not in the game. Uh, his six reception, three touchdown game came in a dome with no Devonte Adams. I think he has multiple touchdown upside against this Vikings defense. If he the, should be a red zone target. He is. And I think he will be. Um, he certainly was when Devontae Adams wasn't around. Devontae Adams was a legit goal line target for this team. And I don't think Lazard, Cobb, I mean, certainly you would think maybe they run the ball, but I mean that's the, the problem. The rest of the receivers aren't like big body possession guys. They just aren't. And that's why I think uh, Robert Tunyon is going to be used a ton there. Yeah. And he's I, only 3,900 Again, and also like tons of positive. Uh, camp reports. He he was dealing with a uh, knee injury last year, but he's coming back. He's healthy. He's looked good in camp. Thirty nine hundred dollars. I I think, again, he's someone that Aaron Rodgers trusts. So thirty nine hundred dollars feels like a steal. Yeah, Tanya no Funyun, flex, game stack with Michael Pittman. Let's go, Nico Collins, baby. Forty two hundred. It, it, it could be Brandon Cooks, but if I was the Colts, I would mm. look to take Brandon Cooks away, and. I've been reading some positive things about Davis Mills. You brought my attention to the fact that one of his linemen, when asked how is Davis Mills doing this offseason, he said, "Dog." One word answer. Uh, the number, like the 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 seven on sevens, he's shredding the defense. Uh, he seems legitimately to be playing well. Uh, Lovey Smith. Uh, I've listened to a couple uh, interviews with him. Uh, I, I have no problem getting behind a Lovey Smith situation, and I do think that there's more versions of this game where they're losing uh, than they're winning. And so I think there's going to be some opportunities for Davis mills to, to throw the ball down the field. The last thing I'll say, I think this Houston team's going to come out and try to win fucking games. I think they're going to let Davis mills throw the ball. They're not no. going to play scared. Like some of these other teams that are looking to play a conservative uh, bl- blend of offense with some defense and hope to hold on. I don't think, I think they legitimately Lovey Smith has said a couple things that makes me believe they legitimately think they can win the division. And I understand it's football speak. Throw out your pie thing thing that you but, threw to me. Oh, well, uh, if you if you if you like the football outsiders and I think even Aaron Schatz has said like, "Hey, we're we're a little too bullish on the Texans, but if you look at their mean projected wins for 2022, if for the whole division, Jags are 7.6. Titans 7.9, Colts 7.9, Texans 7.9, and Vegas has given us 30 to 1. I know this is a DFS lineup, and I know I'm just talking about Nico Collins, who seems to be the most forgotten second round receiver who's going into his second year, who has an absolute bona fide number one across from him and Brandon Cooks. Yeah. I get it. They might be bad, but hey, if the defense is bad, it's even a better better case for it. So I went with a little Colts. Uh, I do think a Colts uh, Texans game stack won't be super popular. So no, forty two hundred Nico Collins, not quite a Millie Maker winner, but maybe maybe he'll be low enough. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think he's going to catch a ton of ownership. Davis Mills. Stack I think we're loading. one of the. You're right in your head. You think like, well, everyone's you're, on Davis Mills, okay? I mean, that's you start with Davis right. Mills. I don't. <laughs> I don't think the Davis Mills stacks are going to catch a ton of You're right. I, I don't actually listen to anyone else. So I'm just, everyone is just yeah. inside my own head. Uh, my flex spot. Give me Rashad Bateman, $5,300 Ravens at the jets. Again, the jets have had serious, you know, I, I know they um, drafted. Well, they got some young guys on defense. Maybe they're good down the road, but also hilarious training camp report that Joe Flacco has been outplaying Zach Wilson. We so. talked about this. I know we <laughs> joked about this, not really joking, but joking. And Jesus, it's happening. And Rashad Bateman, Ryan. How do you play the Lamar stack then? Hypothetical. I love the Rashad play. I mean, I would go 
you know, you can always play Lamar naked, which is a little bit intimidating, but he put on weight, dude. I know he's, he's thicker than he's he was gonna, He's going to be running. So I, I almost go Lamar. Let's go Lamar market. I mean, do you do a double stack with him? You could, but I think Lamar Bateman is, is kind of a, maybe a higher upside. I don't know. I I'd have to see like what the ownership of Mark Andrews is. Cause I would imagine he's going to catch a ton of ownership and he is There's he's, a version he's of this. the highest price tight end. So I, I think I think I it want, gets more interesting if you take Lamar and Bateman. I like Bateman on his own because again, I, I think he might I like him as a as a prospect. I like him as a talent. Um he looked really good once he's you know he started late because of the injury in that rookie year, kind of a lost year, but you saw what he could do later on in the season. I think he's a I think he's gonna have a great year in fantasy, and I like him week one against the Jets. There is a version where he comes out like he did against the Dolphins and throws for five touchdowns. And in that case, you want to have a Bateman, Andrew Stack. You want to have a Bateman, Duvernay Stack. Duvernay is the interesting guy because if he throws deep a couple of times. But honestly, I don't mind stacking Lamar Dobbins Andrews or Lamar Dobbins and Bateman. I I just worry that he won't pass for enough touchdowns to be. But to your point, he I I think if I had gun to my head, if I had to pick one quarterback to absolutely go nuclear week one, it's Lamar. Yeah, we're super high on Lamar, uh, and for good reason. But for, I like the Bateman play because I, again, I there's a very real reason. Like everyone's going to realize he might be a, an absolute stud, and his price is never going to be this low. No, I I could yeah, and especially if they blow out the Jets week one, I could see it just being yeah. The the worst part is that they're blowing them out and they're just running the ball with Dobbins and Edwards or whatever. So, all right, defense. Yes, I have four. I have twenty eight hundred left. Okay, and we're gonna we're gonna talk this out. Falcons were the top defense I could take, which as much as it, it, it's, it seems fun to fade Winston, Sean, I, we have to explore the idea of playing a Jameis double stack, bringing it back with Pitts or Drake London. There, there's a very real opportunity that Jameis balls out against that pass defense for the Atlanta Falcons week one, as much as I like Atlanta, but I can't play that defense uh, going down the list. N- Patriots against Tua. Hmm. No, I couldn't do it. I couldn't play the Dolphins either. Commanders defense against the Jags. No, thank you. Jags defense against Carson Wentz. Hmm. Okay. <sighs> Too much volatility for me. So I just kept going down the list. Boop, boop, boop. Chicago. I'm sure we're on the same defense. 2,200. Yes. I, I just can't. You, you have to. Trey Lance is a road favorite. You want to fade rookies. Okay, check. He's not a rookie. I get it, but he kind of he plays rookie. like a rookie. And now Jimmy G's healthy again. Who knows what kind of drama is going to go down? Uh, but in Eberflus is a guy that the players love, if nothing else. And I don't think they're going to be a very good team. But I absolutely think there's going to be some turnovers to be had this week one. And oh so yeah! When Robert you're telling Quinn? me 2200, 2200, Roquan at the bottom, Smith. I wanted to do a Ravens Dobbins running back defense stack, but at 4,000 compared to 2,200, that's a big Delta. So yeah, I just, I went down there. I mean, it, nice use of the word Delta. You're welcome. Nerd! It's a home team. Yeah. Home it's a defensive coach looking to make a statement. He's probably realizing like, Hey, this is actually one of our winnable games. Cause you know, Trey Lance sucks. Trey Lance or Colin Kaepernick. <laughs> in their prime, who are you taking? Oh, Colin, Ka- Colin Kaepernick had a nice window, and then he mm-hmm. stopped wanting to run the ball, and you know the he didn't have Greg Roman. Offense. He's saying Kyler is a couple years away from not being in the league because he doesn't want to run the ball anymore. I I think yeah, I think we're gonna see Kyler fall off yeah. a little bit because when you when you create so many plays as a runner, and then you decide, okay, I got paid, I'm gonna be a quarterback that stays in the pocket. I mean, even McNabb had that issue to some degree, where it's like. You want to be seen as a pocket passing quarterback. Yeah. You don't want to run, but it's like running helped you win games. That's why we it love helped Lamar. you get first downs. That's why I like Jalen Hurts. Like there's a dog aspect of Hurts. It was gonna get the first down. Lamar is still a winning runner or a willing runner even after he gets his contract. Is Hurts walking around at two thirty five this off season because he knew he had to take on? The- he did put on. He did put on weight. Uh, got rid of. Uh, got got some diet stuff going on. Got some of his baby fat gone. Yeah. Nice. He's he's ready to roll. Yeah, so we're on the same defense then. Yeah, Chicago Bears. If you're not playing Chicago, is there a is there a, another option that I mean, to me, it was the Jags, honestly, against Commando Carson. Let me look at the because again, you should be punting on um, thoughts on defense. the defense. 
Yeah, I mean the Bengals aren't they're 3600 near the top. I mean the Steelers quarterback situation seems like a, a dumpster fire. I mean none of these are really that interesting that are cheap. I mean, you could you could kind of talk me into Houston, but they're they're more than the Bears. And while I think Houston's defense could be competent, I just don't I don't see it. Um Yeah, and I mean New Orleans defense, I kind of like against Mariota, but that's 3,700. I, you know, that's crazy for the price. And San Francisco's the number one defense at 4,100. I, I understand that. Well, because I guess because of the Bears' offensive line and and some sacks and stuff like that. But, but they they might have some short fields. Yeah. No pun intended. <laughs> He's short, and his name is Fields. See what I did there? I don't. His his fields that short? How tall is Justin Fields? I mean, you're a short guy, sympathist, so. Oh wow! Right, I mean, he's six three. Come on! No, he's not. Oh, yes, wow. he That's is. impressive. I didn't. I, he doesn't look that tall to me. Maybe the whiteboard <laughs> was lowered. Uh, yeah, I mean, just ever since the Your hate's so real. Ever since we found out that the Miami Dolphins are coached by a guy who's five foot nine, one hundred and eighty pounds. Yeah, and my my stand, Mike McDaniel, my offer stands. Come into the ring, thousand uh, dollars or no, let's say ten thousand dollars because I know you won't call me out on it. Ten thousand dollars, me, Mike McDaniel. Any sort of MMA, boxing, you make the call. Put us in the octagon, squared circle, whatever it is. I'm in. Oh man, ten thousand to the uh, losers charity. He's younger than you. You got you know, a couple years. <laughs> Dude, I'm I'm on a pretty sweet. I've upgraded. Do you think my, he does your level? I was at of- I was at four pound weights in high yoga. I'm up to five pound weights. Wow. I don't know if you've seen. Just Never been doing at a hot some yoga sweet wide arm pushups. You what? Never been to a hot yoga class. It shows your lack of grit, determination. <laughs> Namaste. Oh uh, man, football's back. <laughs> so great. Uh, hey, uh, what do we got going on again? Oh yeah, Thursday, aka tomorrow or today, depending on when you hear this. Make sure you get in on the uh, live question and answer session in the Discord, sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash Discord. Get going over there. Uh, toss us a nice rating and review for your chance to win a SGPN gift card. Uh, screenshot the Apple Podcast review, send it in. Uh, click the contest tab in the SGPN app. You're good to go. Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, stacking the money green, and he is Ryan. Football is back. Kramer, let it ride.